Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hannah, come on in, come on in. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Over on this channel, we make a lot of videos about lifestyle and culture. So that's everything from sustainable fashion to books and films, and then also organization and productivity stuff because I love it. And this is a favorites video. I thought now is probably a good time to do something like this share some of the things that I've been loving. I feel like because of the current times and how everything is changing so quickly, I need to tell you that this video is being filmed on Thursday the 19th of March. Like, I feel like I need you to know that so you know like what's happening right now in case lots of things have changed by the time this video comes out. But this is the timeline that I'm in. Hey, from the past, how's it going? What's happening? This video is coming out in a week. So, ooh, no idea. So who knows how relevant any of these things will be, but they'll always be relevant because shouting and sharing about the things that we love is always a good time. I feel like I just wanna start this favorites video with my number one favorite at the moment. The real MVP is the internet. Well done internet for existing, aren't we all? so grateful for the internet right now. Just the fact that it allows us to all still be connected to our loved ones, even if we are physically separated from them. And all of the really interesting and creative things that we can do together online and all of these micro communities that are blossoming, how everyone is coming together as much as possible to really help one another out. The internet, man, the internet gets so many points right now. So grateful. I think that's actually really a good frame of mind. It's like not just favorite things in terms of like what I've been enjoying. It's like favorite things in terms of what I'm grateful for right now. I really like that. And yeah, let me know in the comments what you're grateful for right now. Maybe we all need a bit of gratitude. Wow, I've become that person that's like, keep a gratitude diary, but maybe actually that would be helpful. Oh, who knows? We're all changing here. Next up though, we've got our lovely books category and reading is something that we can all do right now. Whether that is reading physical books or eBooks or listening to audiobooks, it's all good. So some books that I've read in the last few months that I wanted to give some shout outs to that I absolutely adored. I'm currently rereading His Dark Materials after the TV show came out. So I reread The Subtle Knife recently and oh boy, I remembered nothing from it. So it felt like actually reading it for the first time. It was amazing. And I believe The Amber Spyglass, I reserved it at my library and I literally just got a text from the library saying that you have a book ready. So I'm like hoping it's that, but I'm like, do I go outside to go to the library? Is that essential? I don't know. I also recently listened to Daisy Jones and The Six. And oh my goodness, if you are an audiobook person, this is the audiobook to end all audiobooks. The structure of this book lends itself perfectly to audio form. The book is about a rock band from the 1970s. Think Fleetwood Mac, think inner dramas and relationships and like what's going on. But Daisy Jones and the Six breaks up and the book is basically told like many, many years later and it's interviewing all of the different band members, but then also people who were like involved. It's a full cast. You've got different actors playing each of the characters. And because the book is written like an oral history, they are interviews. It's just, ah, uh, it's so good. There was something about listening to it as well. And because it's about music, just craving. I was like craving for these songs that they're talking about to exist. Like I want to hear those songs. And there's this bit in the book where they're describing the shoot they did for the album cover. And then they're describing the album cover. And all I want is to see that album cover. I want it to exist. There's like an artist online who I found who had like done an interpretation of it. And I was like, this is amazing. And then there's another scene in it where they're talking about a live show that they did on Saturday Night Live, but it's not about like the products themselves. It's about hearing the stories of 
the people in the band, the fictional people in the fictional band, Hannah, and hearing their stories about like what was going on in their personal lives behind doors and behind like what the public was seeing. As soon as I heard the scene about Saturday Night Live, I immediately just like wanted to go onto YouTube and be like, Daisy Jones and the Six, Saturday Night Live, and like find it. But obviously it doesn't exist because it's a fictional book, but I was so immersed in it that it genuinely felt like it was part of my universe. Amazing. <laughs> okay, so this might not be the best book to recommend right now, but I did actually read it very recently. And that is also because I reserved it at my library and then it became available and I was just like, yeah, I'll go and grab it. And that's Station Eleven. This is really not the time to be reading Station Eleven, but I really loved it. Station Eleven is a fictional, fictional, story about a flu that wipes out 99.9% .9 of the world's population. Fiction, fictional. And then, oh my God. <laughs> Saying it out loud is just a bit terrifying. No, that's not gonna happen to us. But basically it flip flops between different timelines, but most of it takes place 20 years after the collapse. And it's a group of actors and musicians who are in the traveling symphony and they travel between all of the new settlements that have like cropped up and they perform Shakespeare and they perform music. But there's lots of different storylines of like different people and how they're connected and like what happened to them. And it's just about humanity. It's such a great book. It is not the time to be reading it if you are anxious. But it's fiction, it's fiction, but still, it's not the, t it's not the time. However, if you are interested in end of the world stories, my friend Sana, who loves dystopian apocalyptic fiction, just did a video on her channel about books of that theme. So if you are interested in reading lots of books about the apocalypse whilst we're going through a global pandemic, then would recommend. Okay, on to books that I'm actually currently reading. And one of these I think would be super useful for right now. I'm only a little bit of the way through it, but it is by Jenny O'Dell, How to Do Nothing, Resisting the Attention Economy. Oh boy, does this come at a perfect time for me. So this came out last year. To be honest, I bought this book because I was actually looking for something that would maybe help me have a healthier relationship to social media in terms of me craving other people's attention. Whereas this book is actually a bit more about corporations wanting to have our attention and how we avoid giving it to them and how we can refocus our attention onto the things that matter and how we can do nothing. But that is also still something very important that I need. I've like dogged a few corners. In a situation where every waking moment has become the time in which we make our living and when we submit even our leisure for numerical evaluation via likes on Facebook and Instagram, constantly checking on its performance like one checks a stock, monitoring the ongoing development of our personal brand, time becomes an economic resource that we can no longer justify spending on nothing. So I want to learn how to spend my time on nothing. And actually I think this whole social distancing, self-isolation thing is gonna really help me and maybe help us all. I'm only a little bit of the way through it, but I actually think this is maybe a great book for all of us to be reading right now. If any of you would like a book club, just like a one-off book club with this book, let me know if you wanna read along and then maybe we can do like an Instagram live or something to discuss it at some point. Let me know if you'd be interested in that. Maybe it's something that we all need, who knows? And then I'm also currently reading on my Kindle, God bless the Kindle, grateful for you Kindle, is Holly Bourne's new book, Pretending. The publishers sent me a PDF version, so that's how I'm reading it on my Kindle. It comes out on the 2nd or the 1st of April, the 2nd of April, I think. And I know a lot of authors are releasing books during this time and having to cancel a lot of publicity events and book tours and so are struggling to get the word out there about their books. And I know it's not the most pressing issue, but books are great people. Also, I managed to record an episode of my podcast doing it with Holly that comes out on the 1st of April. And basically this book is about a 30 something year old woman called April, who is sick of dating men. She's had some really awful experiences in the past and isn't having the greatest of luck. And ultimately she kind of thinks that she hates men, but she's also attracted to men. And so Holly and I in that episode of doing it, we also talk a lot about like how 
do you balance the anger that you might have of being badly treated, of trauma, with actually still really wanting connection and relationships with men? How do you navigate that? And so in this book, pretending, basically what April does is she turns herself into a manic pixie dream girl, a cool girl, archetype. Hilarity ensues. No, I don't actually know. I'm like a third of the way through, but I love Holly's writing. She's very funny, but then also just like, ooh, it hits. She does the issues, but does the humour. So I actually had a few films that I wanted to mention in my next favourites video, but as people can't really go to the cinema, there's really no point in mentioning them. So I'm turning it to you and being like, what? good Netflix films are out there and also TV. What is good? What shows should I binge? Should I even bother? Brooklyn Nine-Nine season six is coming out on Netflix soon. So I am like, I'm ready. I am ready for that. I still haven't seen Marriage Story on Netflix. I definitely really want to watch that. And I think I want to watch some documentaries. I think I'm gonna, you know, get on the documentary train. If you have any recommendations, please let me know. It hasn't happened yet, but by the time that you are watching this, Dan and I will have done our extended editions of Lord of the Rings Marathon. I'm very excited for it. And maybe you saw me posting about it on social media. But now is the time for movie marathons. I have so many ideas for like, weird niche movie marathons. I love it. Last month we did a before trilogy movie marathon, so before sunrise, before sunset, and before midnight, and I have this idea of doing a princess movie marathon, but non-Disney princesses. So it would be Anastasia, The Swan Princess, and Thumbelina. I want to do a movie marathon of those three things, and then I also want to do a Disney sequels <laughs> marathon. So it would be like Cinderella 2, Lion King 2, Little Mermaid 2. I don't even think I've seen any of those films. Those are the weird niche marathons that I want to do. Maybe, maybe we can make a thing of it, a Netflix party or whatever. That's an app that people are using now, isn't it? Speaking of apps, I have a favorite app at the moment. It's called House Party. I mean, this video is coming out a week later, so maybe everyone is on House Party now. But this is such a great app to be keeping in touch with friends. I don't normally say this about apps, but turn the notifications on. Because when you have notifications on, you get notified every time one of your friends opens the app. So if a friend opens the app and is in the app, you get a notification saying, Taha Khan is at the house party, he's in the house. And if you want to, you can just then open the app and literally click join. And then <laughs> you're just like, hi, I'm here. It, they don't even get like a call. If they're already in the app, someone can just like join your house party. And I love that. And then also it has games. So you can play heads up, you can play trivia, you can do like a quick draw. Uh, Pictionary guessing game thing. And I don't actually know how many people you can have in one call. Haven't tested that out yet, but I'm genuinely really enjoying it. It feels so much more casual than if you were like, oh, I'm gonna give you a ring at this time. It's just like, imagine you're all in a house together and you wander into a room and you know, there's a group of people in that room and then you start talking to them and then you like wander into another room and you're like, oh, you're in here. Oh, let's have a little conversation. I don't know, I really like it. It's a great app. And then I've got some gaming, games favorites, kind of. Just more the fact that I'm streaming on Twitch again, because I've got the time. Dan and I played Sims 4 Social Distancing Edition and we made a basement bunker for our Sims. It was very strange. We got rid of the stairs and now they're trapped in the bunker with a massive baby Yoda. So that's where we're at. Um, <laughs> also one of the things that I'm doing on Twitch is like community Jackbox nights and then also chill coloring in streams. Speaking of coloring in. Am I good at the segues? Mm -mm -mm. If you are signed up to my monthly newsletter, you will know that you receive a sexy scribbles every month. It's completely free to sign up. You get updates from me and you also get a bonus chapter of the Hormone Diaries and then one of these every month. This is April's. I am planning on coloring this in on a Twitch stream this afternoon. And then if you sign up to my newsletter before the 1st of April, you will also get this sent to you. I love coloring in and I feel like it's actually like a really calming thing to be doing right now. Calming thing to be doing in general, 
But I think especially right now, I've got a lot of coloring in books that have been neglected and I would really like to actually get on them. So I have a memos to shitty people one. There's some things in here like, kindly go fuck yourself. Fuck you and the horse you rode in on. Isn't this great? Um, oh, this is one I've colored in. Fuck me sideways. That's not really a memo to shitty person. That's like an instruction to someone you like. I feel like I've colored in more in here or maybe not. Oh, I, here we go. I started doing one. Fuck you, you fucking fuck. And then, oh, in a similar vein, I have one called release your anger, which maybe we all need right now. This is one I did. Come guzzler. This is an almost complete one. Bollocks. Bitch. Crap. Nice. And then my final coloring in book that I got as a birthday present from some of my friends is Rick and Morty. Pretty sure <laughs> this is all I've done in it so far is I've made a ginger Rick. There is lots of coloring in to be done. So maybe there'll be some more coloring in streams. Also, Dan and I don't have a printer. So if we're going to be in isolation and lockdown for a while, I'm gonna have to start doing my sexy scribbles coloring in on my iPad. I always make him print these off at his work. <laughs> my bad. And then I also wanted to give a shout out to Daniel J. Layton in this video for his amazing brownie recipe because yesterday I made brownies. Look, they are so delicious. And just a general favorite shout out to baking. I love baking and that's gonna be something that maybe I do a bit of, depending on how many ingredients we have. Also, Dan doesn't eat cake. That's why I always make brownies for him. And if it's only the two of us in the house, like I can't make cake because I ain't eating that shit by myself. Oh no. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please like it if you do. Please subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you have any favorites especially during these times. What are you grateful for? I'm also super grateful to my patrons over at The Common Room. Seriously, knowing that I have your guys' support just really helps with the uncertainty of this time. And I know a lot of creators and artists are potentially going to struggle a lot. Patreon actually have created an artist's fund. So if you are an artist and you think that you're going to be hit really badly financially, then it's worth applying. Hopefully it's still open by the time this video comes out. But yes, love Patreon, love my patrons. Thank you for watching and subscribe. Follow me on social media for random Insta lives because that just keeps happening. All right, bye.